Hey everybody, welcome back to The Negotiation. On today's show, we're talking with Jacob Cook, founder and CEO of WPIC Marketing and Technologies. And we're going to be talking about the single biggest shopping day on the planet, that singles day that comes up on November 11th, the 11-11. We're going to talk about what that means for brands that get in on the fun and strategies for the ones that don't. Home to over 4 billion people, the Asia-Pacific region boasts one of the most powerful consumer markets on the planet. Not only is it home to half the world's under 30 population, but it's also home to more than half the world's internet users. It's a market no globally minded brand should ignore, but entering markets like China is no easy task. Just ask the likes of Microsoft, Google, Uber, and Facebook. Times are changing, and with the right partners, doors are slowly opening as more and more companies find success expanding into the markets of the Middle Kingdom. I myself spent eight years in China, mostly as a venture capitalist, helping early-stage tech companies enter the Asia-Pacific market successfully. This show is dedicated to uncovering and examining successful China entry and growth strategies by interviewing the people behind those success stories. My name is Todd Embley, and welcome to The Negotiation, brought to you by WPIC Marketing and Technologies. Jacob, welcome to the show. Thanks for coming on once again. Thanks a lot for having me. Okay, so as I alluded to off the top of the show, we are talking about, and we're going to devote most of this conversation talking about the biggest shopping day on the planet, which is Singles Day. Uh, and Singles Day is on November 11th, 11-11, hence the Singles Day. And I wanted to ask you, first of all, a little bit of background, like where did it come from? And then talk about how it's evolved over the years. Yeah, okay. Well, it, uh, it it's certainly several years old now, and it, and it evolved pretty much as, as a marketing ploy from Alibaba Group uh, in terms of making a purely commercial shopping holiday. Uh, and it has grown roughly 20, 30, 40% year over year during that whole wow. time. It was started out called Singles Day, you know, one, 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 one of, of 11, 11. But I think it's evolved well beyond that. I think really it, it is a total shopping day. Everybody participates, every walk of life, whether you're single or not. And, uh, you know, you're looking for big ticket deals. Is it only on Tmall? No, nope, it's actually uh, even moved on into retail. Jingdong adopted it first. They came out with their own 618 and now sort of both platforms do both shopping days. What is 618? Well, it's another one in, in June 18th, also numerically, uh, you know, titled after its date. Does it have something to do well, with the numbers it, in Chinese or? Yeah, it does have something to do with the numbers in Chinese. I want to be rich or Liu Yao Fa. So, uh, uh, Yao Ba, okay. Yeah, get it. <laughs> how old? How long ago did that come out? It was never a thing when I was in China. This is a couple yeah, I of years. Probably, yep. Yeah, it probably was. I mean, it's big now. It, it's probably what's happening usually is we go from, you know, a year long cycle between 111 and 11 and another 1111. Okay, what will happen sure. is last 618 beat the previous 1111. We would expect this 1111 to beat last year's 618 and so on. So, We'll just kind of leapfrog each other. Okay. You know, bigger and bigger sales there. Right, right. And this shows that I have actually been out of China for a couple of years now, but I've been hearing about this 1212. Is that a thing? Yeah, it is. I mean, it's, it's not as big as those two that I just mentioned. They try to put it as the third one in those S class sale groups, but really it's, you know, tier 1A and tier 1B. Okay, sure. Now, it does. Does anyone qualify for for Singles Day? Uh, well, I, I mean, the platforms itself are going to bring a lot of traffic, but there's, of course, these massive deal pages, and no, not everyone qualifies. You're going to need to be in key accounts and then meet a number of other criteria that include, you know, improving and rising sales, um, you know, and, and general uh, feedback from your products and services, and then they're going to want you to submit, you know, like your three to four top selling products and provide some pretty uh, significant discounts on those various category by category, but uh, that's, that's the general framework. So what, what kind of steps would a company go through to prepare for 1111? Well, you're going to make basically your internal decisions kind of by the middle of August. And that's, you know, what products we're going to sell, what the discount strategy is going to be, what the best projections are going to be in terms of how much inventory we're going to need by when you're going to have that all submitted sort of by the last week of August. They went a little bit late this year to the first couple of weeks of September. Um, but by now that's basically all submitted. Um, you've been invited to submit and then you're going to get it approved. Then you're going to lock your stock away so that it can't be sold by another platform or even another page or another deal. And then you're going to start a pre-sale and then you're going to keep selling from the first all the way up until the 11th. Oh, wow. Okay. So it goes all the way through. It's like a 10-day bonanza. 
You know, that's a little bit better. Um, you know, what we find is those first 24, 36 hours and the last 36 hours are kind of your peak times. Sure. But it's a lot better than happening through 24 hours, which, you know, logistically was pretty hard to run. And I think that's going to happen consistently now. It's going to start that pre-sale the first of the month and continue on for the next 11 days. Are the discounts slowly ramping up along the way? Or you would say... You know, well, there's, you know, right now it's 20% discount. We're going to end up hitting 60%, but, you know, we can't guarantee that there'll be any stock. Well, yeah, it's something like that, but you're more likely to start off at 50 and then have a couple of little promotions that'll get you to that 60. So there's not a lot of discrepancy between the start of your pre sale and what you're going to finish off at. But you're right, even that 10% might not be worth it to somebody who's worried that they might run out of stock. So, like I said, you'll do really well at those first 24, 36 hours. And those last kind of 48. Right. Okay. And is it all about the discount? Is is this really the, the biggest thing or is there other ways that the brands can, can participate in 1111? You know, it's really all about the discount. Some people don't like the discount in those cases, mm-hmm. you know, you're, you're going to get some exposure. You're probably not going to get, you know, as much of the increased conversion rates as, as the guys who deal faster or more. Um, but you know, there, there's definitely some benefits. There's just increased traffic over the whole platform in general, you know, you know, probably a 10 X on what a regular time period would be. So you've got that to your benefit, even if you're not discounting prices. Okay. So if we're giving such big discounts and it's such a huge shopping day, so there are just so many people, I would imagine that half the populace is probably in some way involved in going on and shopping. And what I'm imagining is that they are becoming aware of certain prices on certain products. And I would think with that many people seeing certain pricing on certain products, it must somehow influence public perception of what goods are worth in the market. So my question, although a little bit loose, is, is there any resulting data that shows an influence on pricing post 1111? Yeah, well, I think first I should clarify, um, you know, we were talking more previously about ratios rather than were exact discount percentages. Okay. You know, there's some brands that don't deal at all. They don't deal at 618. They don't deal at Christmas. They don't deal at Thanksgiving. They don't discount on 1111. Um, and that's just a strategy for those particular brands. Other brands see the benefit of prudentially launching a, a new product or an 1111 specific SKU that works really well for that shopping festival. Um, and then you're right. Some of the people do discount quite heavily and, you know, November 13th, 14th, and 15th are probably some of the slowest days of the year. And it takes them a while or a full cycle to get back in recovery. Um, but you know what? In general, I would think it doesn't do as much damage as people think it would. They probably, depending upon how their margins and what have you, usually would focus on your first couple of years, discounting probably almost most or all of your margin away just to get as much exposure as possible into the market. Then as you come off of that, you know, your maybe third or fourth 11-11, you know, you're discounting less, um, your overall revenue may be down a little bit, but your margins are way up. Is Just there... as an example of some strategies that people follow. Yeah, great, thank you. Is is there a a slowdown in a, ahead of 11-11, almost like the water flowing away from the beach as the next wave comes in? Is it, you know, do you see decreased shopping where people are just saying, well, why buy now? I'll just wait a week and get it on discount. Well, you do that a little bit. And in general, October is not a very busy month. We've got, you know, a week long holiday that takes out the first True. seven days. Right. And then from there, we're still probably already starting to push our messaging out about the discounts coming up. So you'll see a little bit of increase in traffic. Your followers are going to start to go up at a higher increase rate. But you're right. Your, your revenue is getting diverted a little bit um, and pushed into, into November. Okay, so what if I don't qualify for eleven eleven? Should will 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 can I expect sales to be normal um, as they've been the weeks prior and the weeks after, or should I basically just go camp out on a beach somewhere for ten days and expect nothing? No, not at all. So you know, new brands sometimes too don't get accepted into the official promotion. Really, only what they're talking about is the big brands or key accounts. So you know, that's really only ten percent, I think, at most 
of your active stores are really going to get to be able to participate from a platform level. For everybody else, you got to just think that there is a 10x increase in people on the platform. Just that's increased in organic search volume, mm -hmm. uh, paid traffic, as well as, you know, you can feel free to advertise your specials if you're going to do promotions uh, into your WeChat groups. You know, KOLs can push that message for you. So you're fully. Uh, you know, full control to push those your own deals and your own sales to other people, further increasing the traffic to your stores during that time. So I guess if you're a KOL, you don't want to be taking that week off. It's the busiest, most profitable time of the year for the KOLs. They're booked up months in advance already. After the, the you know, after the whole extravaganza is over, what are you looking for to see if you've been successful? Well, you, you, this is a well-planned in advance event. So I think that in that planning process, we've either decided, okay, we're going to be strictly revenue, or we're going to be margin and be looking at, you know, what, what a profit mark, you know, profit line we can take. And I think from either of those, that's what we've set up before the sale. So if we want to do, you know, four or $5 million in revenue during that time period, okay, that's a target. And we're going to execute the plan that's focused on that particular target. If we want to clear $2 million us in, in profit, um, we're going to look at the plan that executes that specifically. And that might be, you know, less than the 5 million revenue, but much higher margin. Is there, a reason for brands to get excited about more eyeballs on their brand or uh, maybe maybe get excited about brand exposure and not care about making any money? Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, no, that, that's a fuzzy metric. I don't... I, I, look at this. Is, this is shopping. Yeah, yeah. You're not making money on this day. What are you, what yeah, are you doing? This is shopping. This is about shopping. This is about selling and making money. Let's um, zoom out a little bit. What is the landscape, like the e-commerce landscape of China looking looking like so far year to date right now? It's looking good. It's up. Um, you know, there's just, again, so much technology in play right now, so much retargeting capabilities. You know, so I think that, you know, we expect it to continue. Last year's 11.11 was up, I think, about 30% on the previous year. If they could get anywhere close to that this year, I think we'd be pretty ecstatic. But, you know, we've seen you know, revenue up from a lot of major international brands this year. I think a lot of articles and Nike's earning call that just came out a little while ago too, as well, I'll talk about this. And so since we're not really seeing a, a slowdown, certainly in the consumer market in China, in fact, still pretty heavy increases. Yeah, well, I think we can expect a really good 11-11 this year too and hope to make all our targets. Yeah, you think it's going to be the biggest ever? I, no doubt about that. I'm, I'm pretty sure the platform it, will do what it takes to make sure that's true. Yeah, I don't think it's ever not... Uh, continued to break its own record every year. Um, it'll be more surprising if it doesn't. Are they typically savvy enough to, to be collecting that data and be able to retarget them post 11.11? I think in general, they are. I mean, in addition to the many analytics platforms that are out there that help you to do that, I mean, it's getting easier and easier by working and collaborating with Alibaba, both now actually not just in retargeting, but in getting consumer information back to them, allowing people to customize the product development phase even. Uh, in terms of what's working on the platform. So yeah, absolutely. I, I think, you know, we're all pretty excited about how, how good that's going and nobody's anticipating a drop this year at all. Right. Now you, you, you mentioned Nike and they were just in the news very recently and had some tremendous numbers that you, that you and I have talked about off the air. Talk to us a little bit about what that Nike's earnings call revealed uh, and why it was so interesting for basically the area of the world that we focus on. Well, I think it is, you know, runs in parallel. Of course, I think they were claiming 22 or 23 percent up in, in total revenue in China. Uh, and that's kind of running parallel with this sort of unstoppable rise of the middle class in China. We've mm -hmm. seen these growth rates before. We've seen, you know, other brands, you know, announce launches in the market. You see from the, uh, well, the mail article, too, that came out last weekend, too, about all the investments and new companies that were launching into China. So I would expect this trend to continue quite a bit. Um, and again, I think it, you know, on the consumer side, we're seeing nothing but good news. Thoughts for Q4 as we are going to be hitting that or just, just entered Q4. Uh, just your general thoughts on, on Q4 2019 um, that, that brands could be looking out for. Q4 has always been one of the strongest quarters uh, for all the brands that we represent in China. Um, and that's, you know, across a wide range. So it, it's always been strong. Um, you know, Q1, as you get before Chinese New Year and a lot of shutdowns and vacations, it slows off a little bit. But, uh, you no know, Q4, and again, there, there's going to be another say, big sale day in December, maybe the third biggest of the year. Um, so, yeah, it's a great quarter. Uh, and we're expecting big growth this year, too. What about uh, our, our Christmas time? 
Uh, and then, you know, I, I, I don't know for sure. I'm going to guess. Obviously, uh, one of the biggest um, shopping months uh, of our entire year is December. And then we go into January, and I'm again, I'm just going to assume this is where everybody's paying off their credit cards, so there's not a lot of shopping going on. Um, <laughs> what, is, what happens in China through the end of Q4 and the beginning of Q1 and even into the Chinese New Year, which typically happens in, happens in that February, March time, wh- how, do, how does that market go as, as they leave Q4 and enter Q1? What does that typically look like? Well, it, it, it actually gets very different between retail and online. From online at that time of the year, actually, we see a pretty significant fall off. There's almost no retail that's going on um, online at all during Chinese New Year. There's no deliveries. That all shuts down. Uh, so the people aren't ordering. And that actually break is kind of longer and longer, I find, every year. Mm-hmm. So maybe you actually it might only be an official seven-day holiday, but it's kind of more like a 10- or 15-day shutdown. Mm-hmm. Uh, Christmas has no effect <laughs> on anything over here on the online but that's kind of the last time of the year that people might be stocking up on stuff that they need before the holiday. Right. There's a lot of gift giving that goes along with Chinese New Year, but right. a, a lot of that still happens by a retail. Right. Of course. Okay. Well, that, that makes sense. Okay, then. Well, that's it for me. Uh, Jacob, uh, as we ask most of our guests, if you have one piece of advice for people doing business in China, and I know you've probably got 100, take one out of the bag and deliver it to our audience. You've got to be getting real information. You've got to make sure that you're making your decisions for that market based on real, accurate, up-to-date information um, um, and potentially even dynamic information that's changing very fast over time. Excellent. Thank you, Jacob. Very much appreciated. Thanks again for jumping on with us today. Great. Thanks again. Thanks a lot for having me. Growing a company is hard. Doing it in a foreign market? Exponentially so. The best piece of advice I can give you is not to do it alone. When you start looking across the pond for further expansion possibilities, and I sincerely hope that you do, make sure you choose the right partners to do it with. My good friends at WPIC Marketing and Technologies have almost 20 years of experience helping brands just like yours enter China. I hope you enjoyed this episode of The Negotiation, and if you're interested in being a guest or want to connect with me or any of our team, please reach out to us at podcast at wpic.co. And be sure to rate, comment, and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Zai Jing.